great. Ba, ba, ba. Me, you, us. Sweet. Yeah. It's got a nice, a nice kind of <laughs> the, the backstage feel. Yeah. I like it. Oh, it's got like, oh, the yeah, blue, the blue light these, too. Yeah, we just got these new up lights. Oh, it's um, awesome. We've got eight of them. So. That's fantastic. Yeah. Got a promo running. Cool. Yeah. So, is there anything uh, you, you, you would like to share about, like you, you, your family history, like in, interesting things about your parents that might have have in, 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 influenced you as a person? Uh, sure. Let's see. I grew up in uh, Washington D.C. I mean, I grew up. I was like four or five when we left, so mm -hmm. I continued to grow up in Vermont. But um, uh, my parents ran a recording studio called Big Mo Studios. Um, out of DC. Um, oh, cool. And so there was always lots of uh, creative people coming and going, I mean, especially musicians. But, right. Um, but all, all sorts. Um, and um, so I think I've always kind of had an affinity for creating things and kind of like right. technical things and the kind of the behind the scenes making of sort of stuff. Cool. And for an and education, where did you go to like to, 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 to school and, and how, how did that shape you? Um, well, in, I, for high school, I went to Thetford Academy. Oh. Um, up in Thetford, Vermont. And that was a, <laughs> a fun experience. Mm -hmm. um, and I, um, I wanted to go into engineering, actually. Um, but... Um, I remember my guidance counselor being like, no, you're too creative. You have to go to art school. <laughs> and That's great. I was just kind of being like, okay, <laughs> you probably know what you're talking about better than I know. So I went to Mass Art, um, which is funny because I had wanted to apply to Wentworth, and Mass Art and Wentworth are essentially the same campus. Mm -hmm. um, so kind of the time I spent there, I was always kind of like looking in the windows at Wentworth being like, hmm. I wonder if I made the wrong decision. Yeah, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, That's hard. And Mass Art was a place. Um, it, uh, I found it kind of stifling. Um, and I went into the film video department. And I think at an inopportune time, um, the, the department was kind of falling apart. And so just a little while in, I had had some savings and some scholarships and stuff, and they were about mm -hmm. to run out. Um, and so I thought, it's like, well, I can start going into debt to do this thing that I don't seem to have a lot of interest with, or I can like drop out and use the money I have left to buy a camera. And so I did oh, that. Oh, what, 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 what kind of camera what was I it? I got an AG DVC-30, which was a three chip, um, which was pretty exciting That's great. at the time. It was a pretty decent little camera, it had night vision. Which I thought was pretty neat, um, and I covered lots of live events, and I made a few little shorts with it. Um, but at the same time, I, as soon as I dropped out, I wanted to keep. I, I, I hadn't felt like I was getting any like real hands-on experience, mm -hmm. um, so I looked on Craigslist just for anybody that was making a movie and needed help. And I found these folks making a movie in uh, Roxbury called Life, Love, and Loss. And I learned a lot about how not to make a movie. Oh, no. <laughs> um, oh, no. And like lots of great stories from that. Um, but it was like a year of me like working on this movie and like slowly they just like hemorrhaged everyone that was working on oh, it. And it no. was like just me, the assistant director, and the director <laughs> making this movie happen. Yeah. Um, I, I, is there any like one specific story that's, that sticks out? Yeah, from um, that. the first one that comes to mind is the assistant director borrowed his aunt's car and it was like this cool hot rod sort of car and one of the main characters was supposed to have a cool car. Yeah. Um, and we went somewhere else to shoot a scene and we came back and it was riddled with bullet holes. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and like these two people had gotten into a gunfight like Wild West style and just like ripped it apart. And I think somehow they were both fine. Like they'd run out of bullets before they managed to hit each other. <laughs> okay. um, but I remember him on the phone with his aunt being like, no, I, I, when I said we were gonna shoot the car, I didn't mean with bullets, <laughs> film. Yeah. It's an interesting experience. Wow. <laughs> um, but the thing that, I, that taught me the most was I, I moved back up here 
Um, not really sure what I wanted to do. I had taken an EMT class, just kind of thinking maybe that would be like I saw an ambulance drive by, and I was like, oh, maybe I'll be an EMT. And I took the class and never did anything with it. But when I was up here, um, I ran into my friends uh, Drew and Ben Pepperdy, which I who I'd worked with on tons of previous projects. Mm -hmm. And Drew brought up that there was going to be a 48-hour film slam in Bradford, uh, Vermont. And so we were like, let's do it. We've made some little movies before. Yeah. Um, so I brought my AG, AG DVC-30. I called it a super soaker. <laughs> super soaker. That's and, great. And that's all we had was just this camcorder. And I didn't really have any experience with lights mm -hmm. or sound or camera movements or even, like, putting the camera on a tripod. And, like, <laughs> didn't really have much, like hands-on experience as far as like my own vision went and so we made this movie and uh, got second place and we were like oh that was oh, a lot of great. fun and it was kind of interesting working on a movie like we should continue to do more of these and so now I've done like something like 15 wow. of these competitions yeah. and that's where I've cut my teeth and, and I've met all kinds of different filmmakers through it mm -hmm. and that's gotten me to like I found like kind of one of the most important things is to just like kind of be available for other people's productions. Um, and that's where you learn a lot of things. And that's how you create things, is by having a team of people that are willing to chip in and right. uh, make something. So yeah, that's that's where I've learned stuff. Great. Um, but were there any like interesting moments in your in your later career that you think shaped uh, the, the your direction in which the career went? Because I, I, it seems like it wasn't a like a steadfast, just a single thing. Yeah. Um, let's see. A moment like a particular moment where I thought like this can be something I can do as a job. Yeah. Sure. Um, I mean, it's probably been um, with uh, my friend Whitaker Ingbertson, um, who was the DP on yeah. Zephyr. Yeah. Um, and um, he's, um, in some ways, I feel like a, um, a similar story. Um, like, he's kind of been a do it yourself or sort of guy, and he's real, but he's like, Hyper, more, way more focused than I am. Sure. Um, he, like, he can like sit down and read the manual. I feel like where I like have to just like get the thing and like push every single button on it. Um, <laughs> when I get something new, I have to learn it. Um, but um, uh, he um, he's been running a business called Chariot Arts and doing all kinds of different video work. And we've done, you know, we've gone to conferences and been the video and sound people and. Um, just kind of done like various gigs for Dartmouth and it's kind of all been um, kind of very non-creative work but just like you have to be professional you have to sure. have all your stuff and know where to be um, mm -hmm. and that goes hand in hand with filmmaking um, you you know you when it's time to get things done you gotta you got to be professional. You got to be organized, mm -hmm. even though it's like a fun, creative thing. Sure. Um, and so um, that's been kind of a moment where it's like I was getting paid to do video work and kind of thinking like, oh, maybe this could actually be something that people can do. Right. Um, and it's not just a thing that you like put all your time into and lose a bunch of money on. Right. Um, yeah. So um, yeah, through doing that, I. Um, I've pursued a few more video gigs on my own. I've slowly built up my own equipment and um, offered my services every now and then, and eventually ended up here at CATV um, as the studio manager here. Yeah, at the great. Yeah. Um, how, how, how recently that was uh, this summer, right? That you, yeah, you, you, that, you got this job. Yeah, that was. I started in September, um, so it's only been about two months. <laughs> How's it been? It's been good. It's been exciting, um, and the uh, we've got a new executive director, mm -hmm. Donna, um, and with her, kind of everyone has changed. Also, it's um, it, um, I think it's just like every now and then there's kind of the sea change in an organization, mm -hmm. and I think everyone I guess felt like it was time to move on to other things, and so we only have one person here that's been here for more than a year, um, and 
Um, so it's kind of like everything is new and fresh in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, it's kind of like, um, I think that can be important to um, projects or organizations is getting a brand new perspective on things. Sure. Um, so we're all kind of being like, well, what can we do? Um, what would be fun to do? What, what is, what's important to do? Sure. Um, yeah. Um, so I know, or I believe that you, you, you're a m m musician as well to a certain extent. Um, yeah. Could you, you t t t t t t t talk about that for, for, for a little bit? Is that m more of a job or a passion? Um, yeah, that's something that I haven't really managed to monetize in any uh, way. Um, but um, yeah, I, I grew up around musicians, and I'm a musician. Thinking about the audio of this train going by right now. <laughs> um, um, but um, so yeah, I've got a. I've actually got a studio in the basement here at the Tip Top. Oh, cool. Um, and um, it's uh, and I've got drums down there. Drums were my first instrument. Then I picked up guitar and bass and. Um, then when um, uh, there are these pianos around town, do you remember the yeah, yeah, yeah. The Hopkins Center put out pianos. There's one out in the hall here at the tip top. Um, and there's one on uh, Main Street, and I was living down on South Main Street. Mm. And so sometimes in the middle of the night, I'd go out there and play the piano. Um, because uh, it had a blues scale on it. It just like was like marked, oh, play cool. these keys. That's interesting. Like, oh, yeah, if you just play these keys, it sounds good. <laughs> um, and so I kind of slowly started picking up piano, and that's, now that's I do great. that a little bit more. I like to sing. Um, and I was working at Thetford Academy until uh, I started working here. Um, and every now and then I'd get to go into a music class, and I started picking up trombone through that. Oh, cool. Uh, so... It'll probably be, I, now my trombone's just kind of sitting around not doing anything. I'll probably completely forget how to do it. But at one point in time, I could play the trombone. Great. Yeah. Um, and do, do you re re record your own songs, or is that just like a, 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 a place to, 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 to go and jam? Um, yeah, I have recorded my own uh, album. Um, I have, uh, I guess I have two albums. One is, um, I call it, it's called The Worry Years, and it's a tape cassette. Um, and it's just like, it's just a whole bunch of demos of things that I record while I was living in Boston. For a while, I would record a song every single day. Um, I'd sit down on my computer and just use GarageBand and mm -hmm. then plug in a guitar or something. Um, and all the songs were pretty bad. But <laughs> like, through just like attrition, you end up writing a few things that are catchy. Um, and so, um, it's just like a collection of these weird little songs, and I like to tell people that's not a good album, but it's a fun album. Sure, yeah. Um, and through that, I, um, uh, it was two or three years ago, I sat down and recorded a real album, released it on vinyl. Oh, um, cool. It's called Narcoctopus. Um, and um, a lot of that is drawn from the worry years. It's like, I'll use like a riff from one song or lyrics from another one and combine them. It took me about a year to record the whole thing and I played all the instruments, but like partway through I was recording it and um, and it just felt like too much of an ego trip to like have every single thing on the album be done by me. Sure. And it like still is, it's just like almost, it's like 99% me. But, um, <laughs> So I was like, I need just like a little bit of input from somebody mm. else. And so every song has a guest singer. Um, oh, great. And so there's, I think, 10 songs all together. Um, and I brought in a bunch of people that um, have in influenced me. I, I used to be in a band called, <laughs> I used to be in a band called Real Life Time Machines. Ooh. Um, <laughs> and so through that band, I met lots of other inter interesting musicians. And a mm -hmm. lot of them are on the album. Um, and... Um, so my mom's on it, my sister's on it. Um, so yeah, it's just like lots of people that have influenced me. Cool. Um, so w w what about music and performance a a a a appeals to, to you a a as a hobby? Um, uh, that's a good question. Um, like, yeah, why do I enjoy that? Um, like, um, because it's a, a strange thing because I like, feel like I've got like uh, an introverted personality mm -hmm. 
like one on one a lot of the time. It's like most of the time I don't really want much to do with other people. Um, but um, and like I'm not very good at like introducing myself to people or talking to people. But on the other hand, I like really like being in front of people um, and putting on a little act. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like um, this tug of war. Uh, and I think there's something to that, like, because I guess I, I do want to get to know people, but I'm not good in the traditional sense of just like talking to a person. Sure. It's like I have to do something to get people to talk to me. Um, and usually it's something weird, um, is like the best thing I can come up with. Um, so, um, yeah, it's, uh, I think that's the maybe where it comes from. Well, we're back. So yes. um, I worked a couple jobs, and then the audio cut out. And um, that happens sometimes when you work a job. Um, so I worked at the Bagel Basement. Uh, oh, and then I, um, yeah, so I stopped in to see my old teacher, at Derry, mm -hmm. at Thetford Academy. Um, and I kind of said to her jokingly, it's like, if you ever uh, want to take a vacation, call me, and I'll run your class. And she's like, OK, I'll go on vacation next week. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and so. She put me in, in charge of her class, and she didn't come back for like three weeks. Um, and it was it was really neat. Um, I got to just be in charge of this this class, and they were it happened to be a really great class, um, like teaching playwriting and stuff, and just kind of like trying to recall what I'd learned in high school. I hadn't really done much writing since then, um, and. Um, got to know them. And then when Derry came back, I, would, I was kind of like an assistant teacher with her drama class. Um, and I started subbing at Thetford Academy and found that I really enjoyed um, working in, in an educational environment. Mm -hmm. um, and so when I stopped in um, at Listen to say hello to everyone, the executive director, Marilyn, um, said, oh, you, you've been working with teenagers. You, sh you should go check out our new teen center. And so I went down to this place, The Junction. Uh, it used to be right on Main Street, and they've moved now to the White River Junction Listen location. Um, and um, uh, I, I got a job there. They happened to be looking for somebody. Um, and so I started working at the Teen Center, and I would sub at Thetford Academy. Um, and the Teen Center was interesting. Lots of, um, it's changed a lot um, since I worked there. Uh, it used to be kind of a, um, uh, place for the at at risk youth, mm -hmm. um, but people um, they're you know generally um, experiencing some sort of um, uh, stumbling block, whether it's like substance abuse or um, like teenage uh, like they they're raising a kid or something mm -hmm. or they're homeless. Um, there's all kinds of different issues we saw passing through, um, which was interesting. Um, and since that, since they moved, it was really strange. When they moved, and not very far away, they ended up getting almost completely different clientele of um, kids that just kind of like want a place to be um, after school. Um, and it's like equal, neither one is good or was better or worse. Right. It's just like different um, different audiences with different needs. Um, and um, so did that for a while, but then eventually a job opened up at Thetford Academy in the special ed department. And so I applied for that and started working there. Um, and that was really great. Um, it was really neat working with a bunch of my old teachers um, and getting to know um, all the, the students um, and working with students with all kinds of different, um, uh, with all kinds of different needs um, that I hadn't really experienced before. Um, and um, uh, there's times I had to be very patient, like working on a, you know, somebody's history paper with them, and like <laughs> trying to like get them to be interested in this history paper and not being interested. In right. <laughs> being like, like let's just like let's get through this, you know, like, <laughs> World War One, what caused it, um, and um, uh, but yeah, so. Um, then 
eventually I saw a job opening here and people sent me like, oh, you should apply at CATV because you've been doing all this video stuff. And so I applied for that and came here. Um, there's been lots of odd jobs in between, um, things that aren't necessarily uh, constant. Um, I'm the trivia announcer at Salt Hill Lebanon on Sundays. That's today. Um, Ooh. I've been the sound guy at the Canoe Club. Um, I've done lots of little video gigs. Um, I drove for Willing Hands. Um, I drove a van like once or twice a week. Willing Hands is a program where they go and collect food from um, a grocery store. is usually the co-ops mm -hmm. and from farms and stuff, extra food that they're getting rid of, and then they, they distribute it all over the place um, at food banks and at uh, low-income housing and whatnot. Um, and that's great because everyone is excited to see you. Um, you show up and you give people food, and yeah. um, everyone kind of like thanks you for doing the whole thing, even though it's like I was just driving the van. <laughs> <laughs> great. Um, and if you had to choose like one or two of all of those that were like your you 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 felt like you were really p p p passionate and like you 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 felt like it wasn't work as much as it was like a, this is something you you really enjoyed like what, 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 what do you think that would be? Um, well, the yeah, I think the um, uh, when I first started working at Tepper Academy and kind of like it dawning on me that I really enjoyed this, um, mm -hmm. um, that was kind of one of the first times that I realized that work can be something that you enjoy and not just a thing that you go to and are miserable for eight hours. <laughs> um, even though like like the like working at like Lynn Chocolate and it listen had had its moments overall, it was like pretty much a repetitive task that you do for eight hours and it kind of drives you a little crazy. Um, and um, so, yeah, um, uh, and I, I'm still interested in potentially pursuing a, um, like a, a teaching license at some point. I still don't have a degree, but I've been working slowly at, um, I took a, um, uh, I can't even remember the name of it. <laughs> it's this course that you can take at like a community college. Mm -hmm. um, and it, uh, it gives you credit for prior learning. Ooh, that's part of the title, prior learning. I don't know. Assessment of prior learning, APL. There it is. Um, and um, so it's just kind of like you write this big portfolio of all the stuff that you've done. Mm -hmm. um, and it goes to some mysterious board somewhere, and they decide whether or not it's worth some college credit. And so I got like 70 credits or something just by like, writing out things that I've done. Um, and that puts me at about, it, if I were to apply it all to a college and they were to accept it all um, uh, with my old Mass Art College um, credit, I think I can finish up in about a year if I were to do it full time. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to do that at some point, get a degree. Because um, although like Mass Art didn't work out for me, I do recommend people uh, pursue higher education. I do. In I do think education is a meaningful, important thing, mm -hmm. but it doesn't always work out for everyone. Yeah. Um, and so you gotta know know when to hold them, and you do have to know when to fold them. Good song. Um, the um, um, but yeah, then I'd like to uh, potentially get a teaching certificate and maybe at some point become a teacher. Um, great, because it was it was great um, working alongside teachers, but mm -hmm. every now and then. You kind of get jealous, and you're like, "Oh, I wanna." If I was running the class, what would I would I do? Um, um, yeah. So I thought about that a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you said you had a bunch of interesting cars. You wanted to oh, yeah. to to, to, yeah. to to run through that. I forgot we were gonna do a list of cars. I bought. Yeah. Uh, a Subaru Legacy. Um, it was green. I put a flamingo on the back of it, and my friend Molly asked if I could name the flamingo after her, so I did. Um, and th that lasted for a, a little while. Um, and I, oh, I remember I got a $5 winter parking ticket on it, and I refused to pay it. Um, I thought it was parked in a place where there wasn't any signs. Um. And, but instead of like going through the proper channels, I just didn't pay it. Um, and eventually it became like a $200 ticket <laughs> and, and a warrant for my arrest. Oh, no. <laughs> um, and so I sold the ticket with the car when it was time to sell the car. Um, when I was in college, um, and 
uh, they paid the ticket and I never got arrested for not paying my $5 winter parking ticket. Great. Um, and um, then um, at one point through the green roofing company, I bought a Volvo, which I, I started making this list of all the cars I owned because I remembered, I was like, oh yeah, I owned a Volvo at one point. And I don't know what happened to it. Um, <laughs> I owned it with my friend, Justin. And I just have no recollection of what happened to the car. Um, we didn't have it very long, I don't think. Um, we had all these plans for it, and I don't know where it went. Um, I also, when I was in the band Real Life Time Machines, we bought a, um, we bought a van um, so that our guitarist, Matt, could uh, commute from up here. He lived up here, the rest of us lived in Boston, and so that we could actually drive to gigs because we'd always required like other people to provide us with transportation, which doesn't mm -hmm. work out very well when you're banned. But although we managed to do it for a number of years, um, surprisingly well. Um, but so we bought this van and Matt drove it a few times. And then I, again, I never saw it again. Um, <laughs> so it was another, another car that I, I don't know where it is. Um, and they also let me drive the dump truck when I worked at uh, the Green Roof Company, um, which was a lot of fun because you're in this giant, giant truck, um, and uh, you could, if you couldn't find parking, you could just drive up on the sidewalk and leave it there because it looked like it was supposed to be there, like put out some cones. <laughs> um, and um, then when I moved up here, um, uh, my mom was getting rid of her, uh, her prism. Is it a Chevy prism, I think? Um, and... Um, she was getting rid of it because um, smoke would come out of it constantly, um, and it would like it was just burning through oil constantly. Um, like uh, like every week, I would put in like a quart of oil, um, and just like these big black plumes of smoke would fly off of it. And I drove it for I think almost a year like that. It worked out, um, and then I had a Ford F one fifty. Oh, um, nice which uh, eventually the, the tailgate fell off of it um, and we replaced the, the bumper with like a log and then the thing that the log was attached to fell off and that was the end of that. But it was I called it the classic rock truck um, and it had uh, the high beams were a switch on the floor, which I guess was an old thing and it just felt really satisfying. Yeah. Um, and then I owned a, um, a Ford E150 van um, and I, I like vans a lot, and I had all these plans to paint it this cool color and stuff. Um, and I'd done all this work to it, but then the steering wheel broke, um, <laughs> and it was like 800 bucks to replace, and I didn't have 800 bucks, so that was the end of the the van. Um, then I owned, gosh, uh, then I owned an Oldsmobile. Um, I don't remember the year or anything. It was beige. Um, and it was okay. I took out the front passenger seat um, so that I could put dolly tracks in, um, and that became a reoccurring theme, was taking out the um, passenger seat. After that, I owned a, um, a Ford Taurus, um, the, a powder blue Ford Taurus, um, and I took out the passenger seat from that car, um, and that one died in a spectacular way. Oh yeah, the Oldsmobile died in a spectacular way too. It was right after Irene and all the roads were uh, damaged. It was like the day after Irene. I was playing a gig with Johnny Earthquake, who's a great musician you should check out sometime. He always dresses as a pirate. Nice. Um, and he was playing a gig out in Rutland and I was gonna drum for him. And so I was driving out there with my friends Matt and Troy, who were also going to play in the band. Um, and, and it was like, it ended up being like a five hour drive to Rutland because we had to like drive just like down to Brattleboro and then yeah. like up to the edge of the state. It was, it was only like one way to get there. Yeah. Um, and when we were almost there, the brakes went on the car. <laughs> um, just like, and I like looked at the bottom of the car and it was just like leaking all this fluid. I'm like, oh no. And I found, like by using the emergency brake and like tapping the brakes, I could get the car to, oh, and by like shifting the car down, I yeah. could get it to stop. 
And so we did that all the way uh, like to the rest of the trip to Rutland and then all the way back <laughs> uh, and managed to survive. Um, and so that was the end of that car. The powder blue Ford Taurus one day like it was stalling out like just sitting there and I would be driving it would start stalling out and I would have to like shift it into neutral and turn it back on while it was rolling and it, like the power steering wasn't working <laughs> working right. Um, and I managed to like get it into my driveway and like all this oil started just like spewing out of it. Um, and I called this guy like a junk man to come take it. And he came and like look underneath the car and he's like, oh, oh, wow. Oh, wow. This, this is in terrible shape. <laughs> like, do you mind if I give you no money for this? Like, That's fine. Just take it away. Um, so then I got a Honda Civic. Um, um, from my brother who had gotten it from my sister who had gotten it from somebody. Um, and that car served me really well for a long time. Um, again, I took the passenger seat out um, and eventually the floor started rotting out, but I wasn't concerned about that. Um, and, um, but then the, the timing belt went and that's when I learned about timing belts. Get your timing belt checked. <laughs> if it blows on your car, your car won't work anymore. Um, so that was the end of that car. And then I got, and then I got my cop car, uh, my Ford Interceptor, um, and um, that's been great. I got it at an auction. It's black and white. It's got bars and a ram and a spotlight. And I had a Mohawk for a long time, but it started to rot. Started oh, no. to rot. Um, I bought another cop car recently. Um, and I've just been saving that for when this one dies, and I think that's gonna happen soon. Um, so I'll just have another cop car. I also at one point had, my friend Griffin gave me his Honda Civic um, so that I could uh, drive it in the Enduro, which is a demolition derby race. Oh, and, nice. uh, we, we called it Kamikaze, because it was red, and it said hot to Trotsky on the side. Um, and uh, they kicked me out, because uh, I was being, I was driving too dangerously. <laughs> hey, Derby. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Um, everyone should drive in an Enduro. Um, and then, oh, I also owned another Honda Civic. I owned a Honda Civic Hybrid, which I bought just to sell. Um, and it took me a while to sell it, but I did. Um, and I think that's all the cars I've owned. I feel like there might be one I'm missing, but I've owned a lot of cars. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> um, is there any one that y you, you feel was or is the most you? Um, probably the one I have right now, the uh, the the Crown Vic. Um, uh, its name is D Paver, because um, it's ripping up the roads. Um, and yeah, it's been a real cool car. Um, and so it'll be sad to switch it out, but uh, you know, cars yeah. come to an. I I just had to, Recently, the driver's side floor is completely rotted out, so I took an angle grinder and cut out a big chunk of it and replaced it with a sheet of metal. Um, and that seems like a temporary fix. Yeah. But, yeah. Great. Um, and then, lastly, there's a section here on personal philosophy. I think we got a little of that th th throughout. Mm -hmm. um, but do, do, do you live by any, like, just off the top of your head, any, like, overarching, like, guiding principles that you, you a a a a adhere to? It's a very, uh, it's a very yeah. overarching mm -hmm. question. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I mean, I think at times I try to build a philosophy and then don't necessarily think about it or adhere to it. Um, but uh, let me think. It's like um, um, <laughs> the when I was working in special ed, my mantra was kind of like, try to do the right thing. Um, it's not always easy to know if you're doing the right thing, but just just try. <laughs> Put in some amount of effort is really yeah. kind of one of my uh, guiding principles. Yeah. Um, and what are your 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 goals for your your, your future? I, I know you talked you talked about getting your degree and working as a teacher, but is there yeah. anything else maybe less like job related, more just personal? Yeah, I always have like a project um, on. Uh, I've always had multiple balls in the air. Yeah. There's always like some sort of project in mind. I want 
Um, I probably I want to record another album at some point. I want to get a band together. Um, and I have all kinds of movie ideas. Um, I've got some scripts that I've written. Um, but I'd like to work on, um, like I have an idea for a movie that I would call like my thesis movie um, that I've been working on for a long time. Um, What's it about? Uh, well, I've got this one. Uh, I mean, I've got a few that I really want to work on. Um, but the one that um, is kind of always on my mind is called Video Feed. Um, and it's hard to describe. It's like real weird um, and um, has to do with um, these characters in an apartment building. Um, and it's kind of drawing a little bit from this movie Delicatessen, um, which is about all these people in a building and like things that one person does affects another person. Um, and there's kind of like all these intertangled stories. Um, and so it's drawing from that a little bit. Um, it's drawing from a lot of things a little bit. Um, but the kind of the, the, the inciting incident is one of these, uh, one of the characters brings home this old TV um, and he starts fiddling with it to try to get it to work and he accidentally ruptures the, the video tube and the video starts leaking out. Um, and the video is like, uh, we, st we started shooting it at one point and then gave up. Um, and um, what we were doing was we had this old TV and we were like squeezing green paint out of um, the, we put in like a false screen. Mm -hmm. um, and so green paint was like dripping down the front of the TV and then we keyed it out so that it was static. Oh, and cool. So, and then like static would puddle up on the floor. Oh, it's nice. And he seems to be not quite aware of it. And there's um, this like being that comes out of the static and then like, like some of it leaks through the ceiling and gets on somebody's sandwich and um, and it like infects them and um, but and so then there's like all these things about like everyone in the story has a little bit of a goal. Um, one of them is to eat a sandwich um, and um, it, by the end like no one has really accomplished their their goal. Um, they've all been consumed by this TV thing and this being in the TV and then the the being has this want, and then there's there's all kinds of things about like the aspect ratio changing. Like as as their their um, like their interest and their personality slowly kind of gets sucked out of them and into the TV, and the image on the TV becomes better, and their lives become worse, and the aspect ratio changes from like a nice cinematic one mm -hmm. to like sixteen by nine, and then four by three, and then it's shot in like. Um, it, on a VHS camcorder, yeah. and like the image keeps getting worse, um, depending on what's happening to them. And then there's ghosts in it. Oh, <laughs> it's like it's a very strange movie, and I keep adding to it and just like making it more convoluted, um, which is I should probably just stop because um, it's like, <laughs> like I've got like all these things about like, um, um, there's like the shining element to it almost like. Um, um, with like, with these girls that can like see like see something potentially bad happening to their their father, but they don't do anything about it. It's like shining and apathy. Um, like if you could see something bad happening, but you don't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's a very weird movie, um, but it's something that I'd like to um, work on. It has lots of themes. Yeah, it's like super theme heavy, um, but. Um, and I think it's also a fun movie. Um, it has like it has scenes in it with people interacting and like there's jokes and stuff. Yeah. And, like so there is still like a movie. Right. Um, yeah. It's not El Topo. Yeah. <laughs> um, that seems to be about it. I just I, I wanted to wrap up. You mentioned n n n n n Netflix, and I'm really interested to know like what y y you watch and what <laughs> y y y y y your favorite shows and movies are. Um, well, right now, my wife Maggie and I have been watching Stranger Things season two, mm. um, which we don't think has been quite as good as season one, but season one was great. Um, um, really hard to top. Um, and um, uh, I was working on a monster recently uh, for Halloween and for a movie that we've been working on here at CATV. Let me yeah. go get the monster. Sure. Um, there we go. 
This is my monster. <laughs> you might see it at some point on CATV in a movie called More of Us Than of It. Um, but so while I was working on that, um, I would have to take VHS movies and karate chop them in half yeah. and then walk around um, this coffee table. I would unwind it around our coffee table and it would take oh, a really? time. And so we were watching a lot of uh, Star Trek The Next Generation, which is such a nice show. Everyone on it is so nice. <laughs> and it's such a nice image of the future, even though like they, there's like still like elements of war and stuff. It's like, um, um, I, I wish nerds were more into Star Trek The Next Generation again, because <laughs> I think it makes a nicer nerd. Yeah. Um, but um, uh, so I was watching that. Um, we watched um, uh, all of Louie. Um, I love that show. Yeah. Oh, man. Um, uh, what else? There's been some ones that we... Um, Twin Peaks. We, at one point, like watched the original series of Twin Peaks. And then it was like, right as we were done, it was announced that they were going to make another season. And so then we watched the new season. Um, it was interesting. Um, <laughs> it's like... A, um, um, yeah, I'll just leave it at that. It's interesting. Um, um, or, or, or just like a, a, any f favorite sh shows or films that... Um, well, until recently, my friend Ben and I had been running Knights of the Mystic Movie Club at the Main Street Museum, where we'd watch a, uh, a, uh, a... A lot of the time, it would be called a bad movie, but their movies weren't necessarily bad, but they're usually campy or right. like cheap or cashing in on something, um, and they're a lot of fun. Um, and so we did that for seven years and never missed a week. Um, and now our friends uh, Matt and Drew have taken over, and they call it Revenge of Movie Night. Um, so it's still going every Tuesday night at the Main Street Museum. Um, and I've found a lot of favorite movies through that. Um, there's one called The Big Meat Eater, um, which is a musical about a... Um, like a cannibal who gets a job at a butcher shop and there's this kid that turns his Cadillac into a spaceship Oof. and the mayor gets turned into a robot um, and it's great. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. um, and um, like all kinds of like just like like it's created kind of this new iconic cinema view for me like there's all these like like kind of, kind of when you think of like classic movies, you're like, oh yeah, King Kong on top of the uh, Empire State Building, like Casablanca with the plane, and mm -hmm. like now kind of when I think of movies, I'm like, oh yeah, Mega Force when a guy in a gold bodysuit is flying on a motorcycle, um, or like um, uh, <laughs> Ricky O, the story of Ricky when um, Ricky O is a prisoner and he punches a guy's face and it gives an x-ray of the guy's face as <laughs> this fist going into it. Um, just like these really iconic movies from uh, a lot of trashy movies. Um, yeah. So, yeah, I highly recommend watching B-movies. Yeah. Yeah. Great. All right. I think that's it for me. All right. Great. Well, what are you going to do? <laughs> like, what's your... Where, what's your next step? My Let's next step, from you. Um, I am interested in a lot of, of creative things like music and um, animation. Um, yeah. I love a animation. I got b b Blender um, like oh, yeah. five, four, four years ago. And uh, like every weekend when I have time, I'm just modeling. This is, this is something or animating something. Yeah, I noticed some uh, Blender objects in your most recent. Yeah, movie. yeah, yeah, there were. And I, I think our, our crutch in that one was we kind of made the video around the model instead of the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> um, but we had a, 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 a lot of fun do, do, do doing that. Um, so I'm hoping to go to school um, with that in my back pocket mm -hmm. um, to see if that's something I can p p pursue as a p p profession. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, well, that's, I mean, I don't, I, I wouldn't call it too much of a crutch. I know um, when I was doing the 48 hour film slams and like when Whitaker and Liam were doing theirs, um, something that we kind of all talked about at various times is like, 
this movie, we're going to work on like this element mm -hmm. of it. And so like um, 3D graphics and integrating into um, live action is part of the goal. It's kind of like with these competitions, you're given all kinds of different things you have to use. And so sometimes you give yourself something. Um, yeah. um, I think that's a good idea to increase your ability. Yeah. Um, well, neat. Yeah, great. Well, th 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 thank you so much for your, your, your time. You're welcome. And the, the, the stories. <laughs> you heard it here first. <laughs> Bye.